Hello, everybody. Welcome to the last lesson of the school year. Uh, and this is a lesson on factorials and permutations and combinations. Um, interesting uh, little probability topic. Something that is often counterintuitive. Counterintuitive means that you think it would be this and it turns out to be something different. So the problem that I, I use to introduce this topic is uh, one that I've been using for oh, 20 years now. And it says, suppose you were in charge of taking the yearbook photograph for the Blue Wave News staff. There are 10 students and they need to be arranged like the photo below. So if you see, there are five people in the back and then there are five people in the front. So you want to arrange the 10 people in this order. Five in the back, five in the front. So it says, now, because everyone is complaining about their place in the picture, you decide to take one picture of every possible arrangement so that all your bases are covered and that everyone will be happy. How many photos will you eventually take? So in a typical class, if we're in school and I'm in front of the classroom, what I would I would normally do is I would give you guys a few minutes to kind of come up with a guess of how many how many photos you think uh, you would you would end up taking, and what what turns out is that uh, the answers that most students come up with are extremely low. Uh, uh, compared to what the real answer is. So here's how it works. You need, you have 10 people and you need to fill these 10 spots here. So let's say that I'm going to do this in, in just one at a time. So this first spot right here, I'm going to fill with one of these 10 people. Okay. So how many of these people can fit in this first spot? Well, any of them can. So there are actually 10 possibilities that could go in that first spot. Now, once that spot is filled, then there is one less person in the group. So let's say uh, this is the person that, that, that went into, into the first spot. Now, how many students are left over to fill the second spot, right? Well, now there are nine students to, to fill that spot. So now, once the first two spots, let's say this dude went in there, and now there are eight. And, and so if you work your way through this, what you realize is you have the integers from 10 down through one. Just that as, a, as an example, right? So after after we've done this for each of these spots, then you have this last spot. There would only be one person left. So there you go. That one person wouldn't go there. And it doesn't matter where you start from. If you said, well, what, what about, what if I started in the middle or what if I started on the bottom row? You would still have these 10 values, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So how many combinations are there? How many different ways can you take this picture? Well, you multiply this. And this is something in math called factorial. What this represents is 10, and then the exclamation point in math is called 10 factorial. Now, on your calculator, you can find the exclamation point under the math button. And then once you hit the math button, uh, you scroll uh, over to probability, which is PRB, right? You scroll over to that. And once you scroll over that, you can see number four is, is factorial, right? You can see that is the, is the factorial. So what you would do is you would, you would do 10, 10 and then the factorial button. And you can see that the answer is astonishing, 3,628,800. That's how many photos you would have to take if you decided to take one of every possible arrangement of these 10 people. And this is what I mean by counterintuitive, is that uh, when I ask students to guess, their guesses are 
you know, in the thousands or, or something like that. Uh, sometimes you, you get a few students who, who have seen factorial before and, and you might get, get an answer, a correct answer. But yeah, 3,628,800. That's what you get when you multiply 10 times 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10 factorial. All right, now we use factorial. Oh, and then on the next page, yeah, is the is the factorial rule, right? So, um, yeah, there's a bunch of here's an example for five factorial, and and what happens with the factorials is they get they get very big very quickly. So, like you know, one factorial is obviously one. Two factorial, one times two is two. Three factorial, one times two times three is is six. Four factorial is twenty four. 5 factorial, you could see right there, is 120. 6 factorial is 720. Uh, and then, right, from think about this. Then when you, by the time you get to 10 factorial, it's 3.6 million. So it, it gets, the, the, the change in factorial is really quick. I think in your calculator, it could do up to maybe 70 or 71 factorial. And then, and then it's overflow, which means it's more than more than 100 decimal places. So anyway, um, there are two different counting formulas that use factorial. The first one is called the permutations rule. And the permutations rule is, is NPR. Um, different textbooks have different notation for this. Some, some net, um, they use uh, NPX, but um, I used NPR because that's what the notation is on the calculator. And the calculator is also, it's also located under math and PRB. And I think that, um, yeah, it's, it's number two. It's, uh, number two is, is, is permutations, the, the permutations rule. And it says uh, NPR, just like that. And what permutations is, is when you want to choose a subset of items from a larger set, and you are interested in the order of how that subset is selected. So for example, if, if I only wanted in, in out of those 10 students, let's say I only wanted um, half of them. I wanted to take a picture of just half of them. Um, let's say half of the 10 students were seniors. So I just wanted the seniors who are on Blue Wave News, right? And, and there was five of them. So five out of, out of the 10. So um, how many ways could I choose those five out of 10 where the order would matter? So this is what it would look like. N represents the total in the big group, right? It says a larger set total in larger set. And then the R represents uh, the subset. And if you did this uh, using uh, the formula, you could see that it would be 10 factorial over 10 minus 5 factorial, which would be 10 factorial over 5 factorial. Now, without a calculator, if you were going to do this, the best way would be to write out what 10 factorial was, then write out what 5 factorial was, and then cancel. And so it is actually something that you can do without a calculator. Um, and if you multiply that out, that would give you your answer. The calculator is obviously um, a much easier uh, way of doing it. Um, and when you use the calculator, um, NP, uh, 10, 10P5 is how you say it, you end up with uh, 30,240. Okay, that's the permutations rule. Now, the last rule that I'm going to teach you is I'm going to teach you the combinations rule. And you can see it looks very similar to the permutations rule, except it's got a little extra division in there. And that's because the order of how you choose them um, doesn't matter. So if you just wanted to find, uh, 
how many ways you could choose five out of 10 where the order doesn't matter. Um, let's say you needed a, let's say there was an, on a menu, there were, there were 10 appetizers and you were there for, with a group of, of your friends and your friends were like, Hey, why don't you just choose the appetizers? Um, and you said, well, how many should we get? Well, well let's choose five, Ch choose five out of the 10. Well, the order of how you choose them doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you choose jalapeno poppers first, or if you choose onion rings first, it doesn't really matter. So when the order doesn't matter, you use the combinations rule. And the combinations rule is going to give you a value that's smaller because you add in an extra, this would be your extra piece in the denominator. Okay? And so, if again, if you were going to do this by hand, write out the 10 factorial. And then 10 minus 5 factorial is, right, was 5 factorial. And then we actually have another 5 factorial. So we write this out. And so this is what you would do. Now you start to cancel. Boom, 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 boom. The 1 doesn't matter. You know, 2 times 5 is 10, so you do that. And, you know, 3 goes into 6 twice and 4 goes into 8 twice. And so the answer to this would be 2 times 7 times 2 times 9 and you know you could do you know ends up being 28 times 9 and and you get 252 so you can see a, a lot smaller number when you're doing the combinations rule these are nice little um math uh formulas that uh, are often used in probability and statistics and um Typically, you don't see them on the on the SAT, but it's a, a good little thing to know um, for like math competitions and stuff like that. So there you go. Congratulations on making it through Algebra Two Honors, and uh, we'll see you in uh, Pre-Calc Honors next year.